Hi everyone. In the previous lectures, we were discussing about in in the course uh, microelectronic circuits. We were discussing about various single stage amplifiers, the frequency response, and also we discussed briefly about feedback. Before we talk a little bit in in greater detail about feedback, I thought I'll just very briefly talk about multi stage amplifiers, and also introduce the idea of voltage swing. In fact, this is a very trivial idea. I mean, very trivial thing for design as far as an operational amplifier is concerned. So eventually, after we are done with this course on microelectronic circuits, we will then discuss the design of operational amplifiers. At that point, we will see how swing matters and how does one choose an operational amplifier architecture, sometimes based on swing as well. So therefore, I'll just very briefly talk about swing in this lecture based on what you know about, uh, I mean, based on your knowledge on single stage amplifiers and a little bit about differential amplifiers. So first, before I uh, discuss about voltage swings, why do we discuss voltage swings in the first place? I'll try to give an, uh, again, analog design is more of, you know, at, it's more of design specific. It's specific to a certain application, but we'll try to generally define some definitions which will hold true, which will hold true for most analog circuits. One sixth thing is what we call dynamic range. So we said that we were interested in designing amplifiers, but the question is, uh, we mainly spoke about what is the small signal gain of the amplifier. Does this, but we never told about what is the signal level that we can apply to get this gain. For example, if I apply a one millivolt signal, of course, to an amplifier, let's say a gain of 100, I should I will expect an output of 100 millivolts. If I apply 10 millivolts, I will expect I should expect an output of one volt at the output. So one when I say one millivolt, I'm referring to the peak to peak signal level at the input. So 100 millivolts here is the peak to peak signal level at the output. Okay, the total peak to peak signal level at the output. So if I apply a 10 millivolt peak to peak signal at the output, since the gain is 100, you should get one volt. What happens if I keep increasing this? Can I keep indefinitely increasing the input signal level and will the amplifier keep giving me higher and higher output voltages? Of course, the amplifier operates on a supply voltage, at least in low frequency circuits, we cannot exceed the supply voltage. And similarly, we cannot go lower than the ground. So we are limited by the supply range. I mean, this is maximum and minimum voltages. We are limited by the supply and ground. So we can say that after a point, you can no longer expect the signal level to increase. At that point, you will start seeing your output to clip. So if I apply an input signal, for example, as of a certain level, ideally you expect an amplification that should look like this 100 times amplification or you know probably this is not shown to scale but instead the output will start clipping here it will start it will start reaching this value and it will not go higher than this and similarly it will not go lower than a certain value okay so this phenomenon is called clipping so this tells us that there is a maximum signal level that you can apply to an amplifier okay and so what is that maximum signal level? Second thing, then we should pose the inverse, the question in the opposite direction. What happens when I keep decreasing the input signal amplitude? What if I apply a one microvolt amplitude signal, then I should expect, I should expect to get 100 microvolts at the output or 0.1 millivolts. If I apply one nanovolt, will I get 100, nano, 100 nanovolts? And if I keep decreasing further, will it keep amplifying it indefinitely? So that's the next question we have to answer. Even then, the, even there, the answer is no for that because most circuits, practical circuits have noise and the noise dictates what is the minimum signal level that this amplifier can faithfully amplify. Once, so, uh, once your signal level becomes so small that it gets buried in the noise. So your noise level is here and it gets it gets buried in the noise. 
then your amplifier will no longer be able to distinguish noise and signal so your signal level should be greater than noise so there is a minimum signal level that you need to apply so generally dynamic range is given by so this is a very generic definition v max upon v min so this definition is a very loose definition so the maximum input signal level that you can apply to an amplifier divided by the minimum signal level that you can apply to the same amplifier okay it's a very loose definition and generally the maximum input signal level that you can apply is a limitation that is imposed by the nonlinearity in the circuit i mean of course supply voltage and all that but i can say that this is like a nonlinearity if the output gets clipped after certain voltage then i can call it the output is nonlinear you will have end up getting frequencies which are not present in the input similarly if your input signal level is lower than noise your output signal will contain mostly noise it will be completely no longer contain the significant sine wave that the input contained okay so that's why dynamic range is a very important metric for amplifiers again i said there are many analog blocks for adcs and for many other analog blocks we can define dynamic range okay so here i am discussing dynamic range to tell you that there is a maximum signal level that you can apply the input of the amplifier and that is determined by the maximum signal level that the output can reach so let's say your let's let's look at this amplifier here if i look at this amplifier let let me call v max as the maximum output voltage that this amplifier can go to minus v min is the minimum output voltage that this amplifier's output can go to then this term i'm going to call it as v swing this is called the output voltage swing the maximum output voltage excursion that this amplifier can experience that divided by the amplifier gain will roughly tell you what should be vi peak to peak max what is the maximum input peak to peak that you can apply at the input okay that determines the maximum peak to peak so therefore knowing v swing is very helpful so the higher the v swing the better the amplifier is okay so you can call it as an amplifier your dynamic range will be higher so it's a good it's a good performance metric okay so when i say good performance metric it's higher dynamic range is a good uh, performance for the amplifier so very briefly since how to determine swing of an amplifier because we will be using these ideas in the, the design of operational amplifier so since it's an introductory course we'll just introduce the idea now and when we talk about operational amplifiers these things will be like it's it's already taken for granted uh, that you that you know all these things what is the maximum swing that we, this amplifier can experience at the output as the input i mean output level increases what do you think can be the maximum voltage that this can go to what is the out maximum output voltage that this can go to supply voltage right it can go all the way to the supply voltage so it can go to vdd now remember when we said when we are designing amplifiers all the transistors should be in saturation region that is the condition you have to meet otherwise if your amplifier goes out of saturation region then the gain will reduce significantly okay your device goes out of saturation so your output impedance will start decreasing okay your device will enter linear region and the output impedance will start decreasing so gain will also start decreasing so now on the lower side as you keep decreasing the output voltage there will be one point where this device will be on the brink of saturation to linear region okay it will be on the brink of entering linear region that's the voltage you stop i mean that's the voltage we'll call it as the minimum voltage that's possible at this output and what will that be if you know this vgs of this amplifier or v overdrive of this amplifier that will be one vd set approximately one v overdrive yes so the minimum uh, what i have shown here this is the voltage range of this amplifier so this is ground 0 volts and this is vdd this is the total range available out of which at the higher level the output can go all the way till vdd at the lower level it has to be vgs minus vt or v overdrive this is vgs minus vt 
that's the minimum level it can go to so what is the swing here what is the voltage swing of this amplifier maximum minus minimum that will be vdd minus vo drive that's the voltage swing of this amplifier now instead of a resistive load i have shown here a current source load we said we normally use current source load in integrated circuits to get very high voltage gain right now don't worry about biasing let's assume that you have biased this upper transistor in saturation lower is also in saturation in that case what will be the maximum output voltage that this node can go to remember every transistor has to remain in saturation so you have to spend at least one v overdrive p to keep the upper transistor in saturation so the maximum voltage this can go to is vdd minus vovp that's the maximum voltage it can go to right any any higher voltage and the pmos will have a will have a compressed vds and it will enter linear region okay its vds is getting compressed or reduced and the device will enter into linear region on the lower side on the other hand if you keep decreasing this you can go all the way till one vo drive n mos so that's what i've shown here in this swing plot or the swing graph voltage swing graph so you have the supply voltage here and this is the ground zero volts the minimum voltage you can go to is one vo drive and the maximum voltage you can go to is vdd minus vo drive so generally the output common mode the common mode at the output will be chosen somewhere in between these two so that the output can swing symmetrically around this point okay so let's not worry about how the common mode is chosen right now i'm just giving an idea we will talk in great detail about this when we, when we are discussing sim operational amplifier design so the voltage swing here will be this voltage minus this so you will get vdd minus mod vovp minus povm i'm going to make this assumption that the overdrive voltages are same for both nmos and pmos and it's equal to vo drive so for the voltage swing of this common source amplifier with a current source load a device biased in a similar way as the uh, main amplifying transistor such that both of them have same vo drives okay the swing is given by vdd minus 2 vo drive that's the voltage swing okay we already discussed in the previous lectures that if you want to get higher gain out of an amplifier okay if you want to get higher and higher gain out of an amplifier one thing that we discussed in the previous lectures was to go to cast coding cast coding helps you in attaining much higher voltage gains what do we do we keep stacking devices one on top of each other in a total pole configuration as shown here so let's analyze a simpler one this is a simple cast code amplifier with it's a simple uh, or rather double cast code or a very simple cast code amplifier what do you think is the we have already discussed the approximate approximate gain of this amplifier see we said that gm times r out is the expression for the voltage gain the gm of this transistor is what that's going to, is 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 what that's going to matter to us so it will be gm let gm of pmos and nmos be same and it's equal to gm and similarly r not of both the devices also i'm assuming to be same gm r not okay gm is the transconductance r not is the output resistance for both nmos and pmos the short circuit transconductance is given by gm output resistance is looking down it will be gm or approximately gm r not square in parallel with gm r not square so what you will get here is gm r not the whole square by 2 that's the voltage gain for a double cast code in the same way for a n triple cast code when you have n such cast coded devices one on stacked one on top of each other for this n transistors i'm going to get a gain of gm is the transconductance that's going to remain the same but the output resistance is going to be uh, i have already discussed this so i'm going to write it for gm or not whole power n minus 1 into r not in parallel with gm or not whole power n minus 1 into r not so what you will get here is gm or not whole power n upon 2 okay so if you see as i increase if i want to get higher and higher gains 
I just have to stack these devices this way. And we also discussed for a cascode amplifier, we generally prefer a cascode current mirror load, current source load. Otherwise, we won't get good gain out of this amplifier. Now let's analyze the voltage swing for a double cascode. If you take a double cascode, let's assume the overdrives are also same for all the transistors. On the lower side, how many overdrives do I need to spend? I have to keep two transistors in saturation now, so I'll have to spend two overdrives. Similarly, on the upper side, again, I'll have to keep two transistors in saturation, so I'll have to spend two overdrives on the upper side as well. So the overall voltage swing will be VDD minus two VO drive. This is the maximum voltage minus two VO drive. This is the minimum voltage. So the voltage swing you get is VDD minus four VO drive. So for an n tuple stage, okay. See, remember we started with a single common source amplifier. For that, it was VDD minus two VO drive. Now I cascade made it as a single cascode or a double cascode. I'm getting a swing of VDD minus four overdrive. What do you think will happen if I cascade n such devices, cascode n such devices? I have to keep n transistor on the lower side. So that's what I've shown here n transistors on the lower side in saturation. So I'll have to spend n VO drive on the lower side. On the upper side, I have to spend n transistors in saturation. I have to spend n VO drives. So totally I'll get VDD minus 2n VO drive. That's what you're going to get. Okay, so you're spending n VO drives on the lower side, n VO drives on the upper side. So ideally the overall swing available was VDD minus zero, which is VDD itself. But now you're, you have to spend N VO drive on the lower side, N VO drive on the upper side. So you're losing out this much, I mean, uh, two N VO drive amounts of, in terms of voltage, you're losing that volts in the swing. So now I'll write the expression for gain here. The voltage gain is A naught, A naught power N, A naught here is GM or not the intrinsic gain of an amplifier. Okay, that's the intrinsic gain of an amplifier by A naught power N by two is your amplifier's gain here. If you express them in decibels, so I can simply take 20 log A, so 20, 20 log on both the sides, you will get 20 N log A naught minus six decibels. So this minus six decibels com comes because of the loading effect. Your current source is loading the amplifier. So because of which, you're losing this half, you're getting this half factor, which means gain is reducing by six decibels. So 20 log two is six decibels. So your gain is reducing by six decibels because of the current source load. Okay, so the overall gain is 20 log A is 20 N log A naught. So it will be N times 20 log A naught. So 20 log A naught is the intrinsic gain in decibels. So I'll write A naught in decibels n times a naught in decibels minus 6 dB. So we observe an interesting result. As you increase the number of stages, the gain in decibels increase linearly. This is like a straight line equation. It increases linearly with the number of stages. Now look at the voltage swing on the other hand. It decreases linearly because the voltage swing is VDD minus 2 n v o drive. So it's going to decrease linearly. So if I plot the voltage gain and the swing as a function of the number of stages, so on the x-axis I've shown the number of stages, it's decreasing as you increase the number of stages. It's a straight line equation with a slope. You differentiate this with respect to n. Do V swing by do n will be two V O drive, minus two V O drive. So which means for every integral increase, for every, uh, for a step increase of one in the number of stages, we increase the number of stages by one, you lose out two VO drives in the voltage swing. Your voltage swing reduces by two VO, VOV. So that's what this graph is telling us. On the other hand, the voltage gain increases by, increases linearly with N here. So on the x-axis, I'm plotting N. On the y-axis is 20 log A gain in decibels. So you can see here from this equation that this here is a linear function in N. So which means if I want high gain in case of a cascode amplifier, 
I have to I have to introduce more number of stages. Gain is increasing, but swing is reducing. Now what I'll do is I'll try to plot a graph between gain and swing. So we'll try to simply derive a correlate gain and swing and see how they change. We have this expression where gain 20 log A is gain in decibels. So A in decibels, subscript DB represents gain in decibels, is given by N times A naught in decibels. A naught is the intrinsic gain in decibels minus 6 dB. This is the expression for A dB, A in decibels. So N can be written as 20 log A, which is A in decibels, plus 6 divided by 20 log A naught or divided by A naught in decibels, the intrinsic gain. So that gives you the number of stages in terms of A. So I'll substitute this in the expression for swing. Your swing is dependent on number of stages. I'll substitute this N with the expression that I just derived in terms of the gain in decibels. So if I substitute it, okay, I'm, I'm going to substitute this here. We can intuitively see that all these terms are constants. If I'm going to vary gain and swing, I'm assuming I'm going to keep overdrive constant. Intrinsic gain is also constant. Then I'll get an expression of this type. Your voltage swing is given by VDD minus 20 log A. This is the this is the uh, voltage swing is given by VDD minus 20 log A gain in decibels times some constant C minus K. Again, this is also a constant. C is given by 2 VOV upon 20 log A naught or 2 VO drive upon A naught in decibels. So what we see here is this is also a straight line equation. If I plot the gain in decibels, 20 log A in decibels versus the voltage swing, what I see here is that the voltage swing decreases linearly as you increase the gain. So this result holds true for a cascode amplifier. So for a cascode amplifier, it increases your voltage gain, but it comes at an expense of decreased voltage swing. And the voltage swing decreases linearly as you increase gain in decibels linearly. Remember the gain here is in decibels. Otherwise it's actually power A, A power N and all that. So right now I'm plotting, showing this graph, plotting gain in decibels in X axis and the swing on the Y axis. What we are seeing here is that the swing is decreasing as you increase the voltage gain. So this is one major drawback of the, the cascode amplifiers. They give you a high gain, but at the expense of reduced voltage gain. Now, let's look at if I want to get a high gain, why not simply directly cascade amplifiers? Just put a cascade of n common source amplifiers Okay, let's not worry about polarity right now. So if I put n common source amplifiers, then I can also get a very high gain, okay, by cascading n common source amplifiers. Now for the time being, you will understand very briefly in a, in a few moments, I'm going to assume that at each stage, I'm going to cascade this common source amplifiers, I'm going to use a cascode current load. Okay, a cascode current source load, and the last stage, I'm going to use a simple PMOS current source. I, I mean, as though it's a, a, a typical common source amplifier with a PMOS current source load. Now, let's similarly make an assumption that R, ROP equals RON equals R0, and the transconductance is also the same for NMOS and PMOS transistors. Then let's find out the overall gain of this amplifier. The gain of the first stage is given by GM of this transistor, GM, multiplied by the output resistance. On the lower, on the lower side, it is R0. In parallel with looking up, it's going to be GM R0 squared. So this result, I can approximate it to R0. So multiplied by GM. So the gain of this stage is going to be GM R0 itself. Approximately, it's going to be GM R0 itself. Similarly, the gain of the second stage will also be GM R0. And the last stage, because I'm loading it with a PMOS current source load, not a cascode load, the gain is going to be GM R0 by 2. So it's going to be R0 parallel R0, that's your output resistance. So the gain will be GM R0 by 2. So now if you see the overall gain, okay, the half factor is coming only in the last stage, is given by GM R0 whole power N by 2. Okay, I did this, I did this cascode biasing to 
give you an apples to apple comparison so now we have a cascode amplifier and a cascaded common source amplifier both having the same gain and both have the same dependence on the number of stages as you increase the number of stages we are seeing the gain also increase exponentially or if i express gain in decibels a in decibels you get n a not in decibels minus 6 decibels so this minus 6 comes from the loading effect in the last stage for a cascode amplifier the single stage load itself was sufficient to reduce the gain by a factor of half so again we have gain as a linear function in decibels as a linear function in the number of stages but what about voltage swing if you look at voltage swing here if you try to find out what is the voltage swing let's assume the overdrives are same for nmos and pmos what is the voltage swing of this amplifier at the output stage here pdd minus 2 v overdrive okay it's just pdd minus 2 v overdrive there is no n factor right because at the output there are just two transistors you just have to keep these two transistors in saturation that's it okay there is no such constraint as a cascode where you have to keep all the transistors in saturation here it's just two transistors in saturation now remember if this voltage swing is say v swing what is the voltage swing at this point at the input what will be the voltage swing at the input divided by the gain right it will be divided by gm or not by 2 so this is going to be smaller so if you ensure the last stage transistors are in saturation obviously the stages preceding them before them will be in saturation by default you don't have to worry about that okay so i think some of you had that doubt so if you ensure the final stages where the devices have a risk of running out of saturation so therefore you just have to ensure that the final transistors are in saturation region so the maximum voltage it can go to is vdd minus 1 you have to spend one voltage one vo drive on the upper side to bias pmos and one vo drive on the lower side to bias nmos so the swing is going to be vdd minus 2 vo drive now if you see here even if i change the value of n does the swing change here the swing is independent of the number of stages okay the swing here is independent of number of stages so therefore if i plot the gain in decibels versus swing and i mean versus number of stages and swing versus number of stages this is the graph i'm going to get the gain is increasing with a slope i mean with a factor of i mean linearly with the number of stages slope of course is given by a not in decibels okay slope here is given by a not in decibels so if you keep increasing the number of stages your gain will in decibels the gain will increase by a not decibels for every stage you add okay i'll just come to that and the voltage swing if you look at the voltage swing of this amplifier it is independent of the number of stages okay so now one of you i think it's a it's 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 simple but let me just explain that point again so you are asking why do we care about the voltage swing only of the last stage now when you apply a small signal at the input at every stage an amplification is happening and at the last stage do you agree the signal is amplified by a factor of a which is given by gm or not whole power n by 2 at the final stage so the output swing will be maximum at the final stage okay the output swing at the stage before that the output swing at this out, i mean at the stage before that it's going to be one intrinsic gain lower right i mean intrinsic gain by 2 lower so which means if this was v swing this is going to be v swing divided by a not by 2 so that's going to be smaller than the output here since the stage preceding that will also be some form of cascode amplifier okay um, it, it's go sorry it's going to be a common source amplifier um, and the swing is going to be lower than what is at the output these two devices will anyways remain in saturation so you don't have to worry yeah okay so now what we see here is that the gain increases linearly with the number of stages but the swing remains constant with the number of stages so therefore if i plot swing since it doesn't depend upon number of stages it will obviously not depend upon gain as well a in decibels so therefore if i plot 
the gain versus voltage swing, you can see that even though I'm increasing the voltage gain, the swing will remain constant at PDD minus two way out drive. That's the advantage of a multi-stage amplifier when you cascade stages. Instead of going for cascode, if I go for a multi-stage, the word I'm going to use here is multi-stage amplifiers, swing and gain can be decoupled. Okay, you can choose your set your swing and gain independently. Whereas in case of a cascode amplifier, the gain and the swing are strongly correlated. In fact, they are linearly correlated, which is what we are seeing in this example here. For a cascode amplifier, we saw that the swing linearly decreases as you increase the DC gain. Okay, so I'll stop at this point. We'll then start discussing more about feedback amplifiers and also preferably I'll uh, start a course on uh, operational amplifier design. At that time, we'll discuss in greater detail.